So yeah, I'm I'm Jing Xuan, a PhD student at the ETH Zurich, and this is a joint work with Gisho Sivan Rupan, Pilar Zankov, and Martin Vechev. So the first slide, symbolic execution, yeah, challenges and goals. Uh, I'm sure that uh, many of you know more about about this than me, but uh, I would like to still repeat it here because I want to keep on, everyone on the same page. So here uh, I have a example program, a uh, control flow graph, which has uh, seven nodes, and uh, there's a loop between the node C and F. So I just want you now to briefly show how a path exploration works in symbolic execution. So it maintains a list of candidate states, and every time you just pick one state from the list and explore it. So initially, the state A0 represents the uh, block A, and uh, the symbolic solution choose this state, and it pushes the two descendants of the two children of uh, A, the B0 and C0 to, to the candidate states. Then it explores B0, which represents the block B. And uh, similarly, it puts it uh, append the uh, two, two children of B into the, into the list of candidate states. Then we can continue this. And then we reach a, a block E, which is an exit of the program. Then we generate one test case. So that's roughly how it works. And uh, to achieve maximum coverage with, uh, for symbolic execution, we have an op objective here. So it's, so the goal of symbolic execution to achieve higher coverage is to generate a set of tests uh, under the argmax. And uh, the goal is to, uh, so for, for each test, we have a coverage function to measure the coverage of the test. And the goal is to, to uh, achieve the maximum amount of uh, coverage given the total time spent on the execution. So there's a well-known challenge called path exploration in the symbolic execution. So, I mean, the states, number of states is exponential in the number of branches. And uh, the deeper you go, the, the more states you have. And for example, it can reach a lot of ranges in, even for smaller core UTS programs. So the goal of our work is to obtain a good strategy that can select promising states. And uh, we solve this with a machine learning approach. So we define uh, the problem or state selection strategies as a mapping from a state to uh, some important score, measuring how important this score is for the goal of the symbolic execution. So before we actually uh, present our own, uh, our own strategy, we, we want to ask the question, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the ideal state select strategy? That's the uh, maximum we want to achieve. So let me list again the, the, the objective of symbolic execution. So that's the uh, the, the coverage achieved divided by the number of time spent on execution. And correspondingly, for state st selection strategy, we define a reward function. So the, the numerator here is, is, so there's a test from function, uh, which uh, means that, which returns the set of tests originates from the state S. And the numerator is just the, the total coverage of this test. And uh, the denominator is the, the accumulated time spent on the, all the states that originates from the, from the states. So this rewards um, achieve, kind of achieves the, the goal of symbolic execution if we, we can always select the, the state with highest reward. But, the problem is here is that we cannot calculate this test from and states from function at the test time because we, when we explore one state, we don't know what tests and what states we, uh, we will get after exploring these states. So this, this ideal selection strategy cannot, achieve, cannot be achieved in general. So, but what we can do is that we can learn a model to predict 
this this reward, then we can select based on the predicted reward. That's the, the idea of the of this work. So so our learn strategy is called nurch. So the how it works in like a schema states, it's it, it extracts some features. And uh, the features include that uh, uh, how many functions has been called to reach this state and uh, how many new courage has states this state already achieved this kind of stuff. And uh, so the, 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 the feed or forward network just uh, predict the reward for this state. And uh, we train this, this feed forward network with a, with a training data set of programs and uh, and we also uh, use already existing uh, manual heuristics in CLI to, to run on these training programs and get some data set for training this network. And uh, the features also include this, the, the properties of the, of the heuristics in the, in the uh, existing strategies. So uh, one challenge is that uh, to train this, to train this network, we need the supervised state set. That's the input is the state and the features and the output is the reward. But uh, uh, initially, uh, we just have training programs. So the so, so currently our goal is to to obtain a supervised data set to train this network. And uh, so I would show you how it works on this example CFG again. So on this CFG, we run. Uh, I mean, this this is uh, one of the training program now, and we run this we run symbolic execution with some strategies can be heuristics or already known strategies. And we generate some test cases. So the first test case ex explores states A0, C0, F0, and G0. And it covers blocks A, C, F, G. And uh, it achieves, because it's the first test and it achieves co new coverage, A, C, F, G, block coverage. And the second test, uh, explore the, the loop CF twice and uh, it's, it achieves the same coverage and uh, but it doesn't achieve any new coverage because all ACFG has been already covered by the first test. And uh, for the third test, we, uh, the, the symbolic execution explores uh, A0, B0 and D0 covers blocks A, B, D and the new coverage is block B and D. So that's the three tests we generate. And we'll also recall the time spent on exploring each state. So for example, here, uh, we spent one second on exploring block A0. And then from these tests, we build a tree of, of blocks. So the tree looks like this. And um, so, each path from the root to a leaf is just uh, the state explored by one test. And uh, yeah, so the leftmost path is the first test and so on. And uh, we also uh, mark the, the time spent on each test, like uh, spend on each path, all the state in the path on the, on the, on the leaves. So, for the first test, the total time is four seconds. Then what we can do is that we calculate the reward. So this table shows the, the time spent on each state and the total coverage of, it, of each state and the total time spent on each state and then the reward. So for example, to calculate the reward for F0, we what we do is that we first uh, co compute the total coverage given by F0. It's computed by uh, uh, summarizing all the coverage for the, at the, at the descendants of the F0. That is all the, all the coverage achieved by the tests that are generated from F0. So that's the total coverage is four. And the second, we, we calculate the total time spent on F0, which is eight. So it's calculated by um, uh, the, spend, the time spent on F0 and its descendants. So, so 
So we can see here that F0 spent two seconds, seconds and G0 spent two seconds and C, so on C0, C1, F1 and G1 spent one, one, two seconds. So the total is eight, eight seconds. Then we divide by, by divide the total coverage by the total time, then we can get the reward uh, point, point 0.5. So we do this for, for each state. So in the end, we have a supervised data set, like from the state to the reward. And so now we, we show how, how to obtain a data set, training data sets for one program. So we summarize this in an algorithm now. So the algorithm is called uh, gen data, and it takes a set of training program and set of strategies for running the program. And uh, the output is a supervised data set. So initially we set the supervised data set to an empty set. And for each strategy and each program, we run symbolic execution to obtain new supervised data with the, with the steps we just talked about. And uh, we add this data set to, to the result data set. And we just return it, the result data set in the end. And uh, we can actually do, do use this gen data uh, algorithm for, for multiple iterations. So for further first iteration, we we run gen data on a set of training program and on some existing manually designed expert designed heuristics, and we we generate some supervised data and we have a strategy. We can learn strategy, and at future iterations, we we run the we can generate more data with the already known strategy from previous iteration. And then we can learn another strategy, strategies. So, so uh, what we do in the end is that we, we use a number of these strategies. So we, we have four strategies, four known strategies, and we divide the total time by four. And we just, for each, each part, we just use one of these known strategies. And uh, we train, train our training programs are half of the core years programs. So now comes to the evaluation. The first evaluation is done on the on the other half of the core years programs, and the time limit is as usual one hour. So we have as baseline we have some uh, some existing heuristics like uh, uh, that are that are in, already in the tree. And the portfolio here is, is a compilation of this, uh, this the, the best performing strategies, the heuristics. And what we have is that, uh, so for nine coverage, knowledge achieves more than this baseline. And we also check the undefined defined behavior sanitizer violations on these strategies. And also Lurch, uh find more undefined behaviors on these core UTS programs. And the second evaluation is done on 10 real-world programs that are a lot from core UTS to measure generalization to, to other programs uh, that are different from the training set. So we, we use eight hour time limit and I show two programs here and uh, the green one is Dutch and the the shaded area is the standard deviation across multiple runs, and the others are, are other baselines. And also try to detect on the hand behavior sanitizer violations. And also knowledge is at least equal to, to uh, existing strategies. And so as you know that uh, AFL takes some initial seeds for running the fuzzing, and we use we use uh, the seeds from CLI, the, the test cases from CLI to generate this this initial seeds, and we 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 found that the the seeds from from Nudge can produce more paths, and also find can help AFL to find more secure uh, UBSM violations. And this actually, this work actually can be uh, uh, categorized in a paradigm that we have been doing in the last few years. So it uses a NERD model to 
guide classical analysis and like static analysis and, and small diffusion and fast input camp. This can be can have achieved effective and efficient classical analysis and also have the guarantees from the analysis that the it that it bases on the classical frameworks and uh, it can solve the problem that classical analysis solves. And what I present can be can be summarized in a general recipe that we have applied to to some works. So Nudge is one of these, and we in light we try to use this recipe to to speed up the uh, abstract interpretation. And uh, in IIF we try to learn to learn faster from the test cases from symbolic solution. So that's all my work. That's my work. Thanks everybody. And this is the code can be found here. And also this 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 work is published at CCS last year. And I forgot to include the link, but you can find it online. Thank you, everyone.